Okay, looking back, I never had Gunstar Heroes as a kid. Hell, I didn't even know the game existed. But come on, give me a break. It's not as easy as nowadays simply going on YouTube, typing in top 10 Mega Drive games just wasn't available back then. Hell no. Back then, all my Sega knowledge came from the official Sega magazine, which was one of my serious highlights of every month. Basically, if you ever missed an issue or two, then there was a good chance that you actually completely missed out on an absolute gem, which I can only imagine is what happened here. Now obviously, this was back in the day, back before the original game made its way onto practically every top 10 video going for the system. In fact, it was only until I was in the midst of the PlayStation 1 era of gaming, a time when DJing was actually the most important thing to me, and video games sort of become a little bit forgettable. It was then when I went round a mate's house who had a good selection of old 16-bit games, who booted up this random looking game that I'd never heard of, and I was instantly hooked. Gaming, most notably retro gaming, became my new number one hobby of choice once again. How the hell did I not know this thing existed? This is an outstanding game, and probably most surprisingly of all, was the fact that the game was playing on a Mega Drive. Just look at it, it's stunning, doing things that I'd previously never thought was doable on the system. Gunstar Heroes, where the hell have you been all my life? Well, who cares, you're here now. And it's apparent looking at the comments of my recent complete history of Metal Slug video that all of you guys seem to really like the games too. So join me as we look into exactly why that is, but obviously to also look into the development, how the game almost never made it to these shores, and of course, the often forgotten sequel. Welcome to Slug's Game Room. Lunatic Gunstar, the original work in progress title by creator Masato Magawa, was already made to the exact specifications that the original team of Seven had wanted since the beginning. But as you no doubt know, it was Sega of America that jumped in to, yet again, make a fairly big change. Heck, it worked for Sonic the Hedgehog, right? What the hell am I talking about? Haha, <laughs> well. I think we're in fact getting a little ahead of ourselves. So, let's go back to the beginning. So here we are, back before the 1993 release of Gunstar Heroes, and even before the 1992 opening of Treasure, the guys who made it. Yep, here we are back in 1989, at a little known company called Konami where the previously mentioned Masato Magawa was the programmer on the Game Boy game Castlevania The Adventure. It was whilst he was here at Konami that he also worked on other games such as Roller Games, Laser Invasion and Bucky O'Hare. But what's more important is what he was doing whilst he worked at the company. Well, whilst he worked at the company on these games during his work life, he actually, along with several other Konami colleagues and friends, got together in a coffee shop on a regular basis to discuss their dream projects, and more importantly, eventually form the legendary game developer known as... As I already said, Treasure was formed back in 1992, and going off the plans made in those previous meetings, a team of only seven started working on the game that you're all here to see. Gunstar Heroes. Now, Gunstar Heroes was in development for about 10 years, and it was Treasure's first game out of the gate. A game that would set the standard of what is expected from the company, which thankfully they've always managed to uphold. Or at least that's what I think. You see this little sign here? The official Sega Genesis seal of quality? Well, this is proof that a board of Sega officials have approved the game to be released on their system. And you will be surprised to hear that Gunstar Heroes, that game that everybody loves, almost didn't make it. Now sure, quite a few games, brilliant games in fact, get rejected from time to time when hitting this process, but most of the time it's to change a sprite or something minor. However, Sega of America was rejecting games sent over from Sega of Japan left, right and centre. And Gunstar Heroes 
called Blade Gunner at first, in reference to Blade Runner the movie, before changing its name to Lunatic Gunstar at the time, was yet another game that was rejected by the entire board. No one liked it. Why? Well, firstly the name. Yeah, they was possibly right on that one, Lunatic can be seen as a little taboo, but name aside, they didn't like the look of it. I mean, damn, the game sprites were tiny. Just look at games like James Buster Douglas Knockout Boxing. <laughs> that game obviously looks 10 times better than this, right? Obviously not. But Sega of America thought so. Yeah, it's easy to point fingers and laugh nowadays, and it's a little crushing to think about the amount of amazing games that didn't make it in favour of underpar sport-related titles. But back then, those guys at Sega of America were actually, sadly, doing the right thing, present game excluded. The aim was to get the Genesis in front of as many people as possible, and it's because of Sega of America that the Genesis actually ended up, for an extremely short amount of time I might add, beating the competition. It was only after this, when stuff like this was released, did they start to royally fuck it up. But hey, that's a story for another episode. Back to Lunatic Gunstar. Not only do you have Masata Magawa and his team of seven to thank for this game, some of which, by the way, actually worked on Contra 3 of all games, but you also have Max Senor. This is someone you should be thanking. The final guy at Sega of America to try the game out that everyone else thought was crap. If this guy didn't like it, then back to Japan it goes. So far, not only did every producer at Sega of America downright reject the game, but so did all of the associate producers. 12 people had said no, and after 5 minutes of playtime, Mac dropped his controller on the floor and said, This is game of the year. Followed by everyone in the earshot laughing at him. Either way, long story short, Mac became the game's producer, the game's name was changed to Gunstar Heroes, and the only other real change that he put in place was that one of the bosses changed from literally being Hitler to a normal military dude, without the iconic Tash. Hmm, probably another fairly good move on Sega's part if you ask me. So here it is, the first of only two games in the Gunstar Heroes complete history. Like I said, I've got no real nostalgia with this particular game, as I discovered it well after the Mega Drive era, but I still class it, just like everyone else, as one of the system's greatest games. Now I'm not going to go as far as saying it's better than Metal Slug, as many people did in the comments of that video, but I will say that it is damn, damn good. Now one of the really cool things about Gunstar Heroes is the ability to choose the way you want to play. When you start up, not only do you choose your character, but you choose your shooting style and your weapon. I don't know about you, but that screams instant replayability before you've even started the game. The fixed shot is easily the most accurate way to play, as it lets you shoot your weapon of choice in eight different directions. But, as you may have guessed, you're in a fixed position. Free shot is by far more fun, as it basically lets you run and gun, although at a far more inaccurate manner. Choosing this option makes the game far more hectic, and that's what I'm going for with a game like this. However, playing the game in two player, and each choosing a different style of play, really does make the game stand head and shoulders above the majority of other games in the genre. A far more enjoyable co-op experience rather than just shoot, shoot, shoot. It's fantastic fun. The style of platforming in this game is also pretty damn good. You can hang from walls or ceilings or ledges while shooting away. You can grab hold of enemies if you get close enough and sling them to the other side of the screen. You can even do this with bombs that the enemies chuck your way. And you can even throw your second player without causing damage to them. You can slide, you can do body slams, and you can even jump kick your enemies in the face. All of these techniques that you learn to master whilst playing the game helps mould your style of gameplay into quite a unique thing. Someone else out there might be able to complete the game just as easily as you, but they're going to be playing it in a completely different way. All of this, and I haven't even got into the weapon system yet. I have never seen a 16-bit game do it as well as Gunstar Heroes. Sure, you got the obvious four weapons to choose from at the beginning, but as you play, you pick up more weapons and you can combine them together, resulting in 14 different types of weapon combinations. Another option you get after choosing the way you want to play is the ability to choose one of four levels. 
meaning that you get to choose the way you progress in the game too. This game really is the result of so many ideas thrown in the blender and somehow ending up with a game that has so much variety you're not going to get bored after the hour or so it takes to complete it. Even after completion, if you're like me, you'll find yourself wanting to try it again, but in a different way. You've got space shooting levels, typical platforming levels, even a random board game section. And my god, the bosses. Even though this is on the prehistoric Mega Drive, Gunstar Heroes bosses are something quite special. All featuring a unique twist that requires to fully learn the ways of the pattern in order to defeat them. None of these battles, however, are more impressive than the famous Seven Force. Depending on the difficulty you punched in at the beginning of the game, this incredible boss can take the form of three, four or seven different incarnations for you to go up against. Truly the best boss in the game, and one of the 16 bits, if not gaming as a whole's, standout moments. Gunstar Heroes is an absolute blast, brilliant mindless fun that when you dig a little deeper you end up finding a game that is in fact a lot more than simply hold right and shoot. Even though it's not my favourite game in the genre, to a lot of people it is, and I can see why. In my opinion it is without a doubt 100% worth your time. If you have never played the game before or any game like this, then why not start here, you're not going to regret it. Even if 12 out of 13 people at Sega of America didn't think us UK and American audiences would like it. Even good old Mac couldn't 100% convince them and the game ended up being shipped in some pretty low quantities upon release. Ok maybe not that low, but 63,000 copies originally for a game that won numerous Game of the Year awards and sold over 1.1 million copies. If they got it right first time and shipped more units, then perhaps Gunstar Heroes would have actually been more well known and ultimately, you never know, it could have ended up on my radar too. Either way, Gunstar Heroes was popular enough to get a port for the Game Gear, which sadly didn't make it outside of Japan, and worst of all, it's actually pretty damn good. Sure some of the graphics and multiplayer are now missing, Heck, even some of the levels have been completely reworked, resulting in a port that feels more like its own game entirely. But it wasn't done by Treasure this time, and instead M2 reworked the game to work on what is essentially an 8-bit system. Take it from Top Hat Gaming Man, who has actually reviewed all of the Gunstar Hero games separately. Gunstar Heroes for the Game Gear is one of the very best games in the whole of the Game Gear's library. Sadly, as it's a Japan only game and it came out when the Game Gear was on its way out, the game didn't sell too well and therefore has become quite the rarity. The best way to play the game officially is by buying the Sega Ages 2500 series volume 25 Gunstar Heroes Treasure Box. Not only does this feature Gunstar Heroes for the Game Gear and Mega Drive with some nice artwork to go with them, it also strangely enough features a Gunstar Heroes prototype as well. And you've also got Alien Soldier and Dynamite Heady for the Game Gear, Master System and Mega Drive. Another couple of games that you're no doubt going to be hearing from me very soon. Ok, so what's next? Well that would be Gunstar Super Heroes, or Gunstar Future Heroes as it was known here in the UK, for the Game Boy Advance. Not really a sequel in my opinion, but instead more of a reworking of the classic game. Or at least that's how I feel. Firstly, let's get the elephant out of the room. This game has no multiplayer. A massive shame that really shouldn't have been overlooked. But sadly it was. And well, there you go. Negatives out of the way. What you're left with is a single player experience that truly does rival the game before it. A stunning game that follows on where the original game left off. Sure the levels are based on Gunstar Heroes, but don't let that fool you into believing this game has no original ideas because it's what they've done with those levels that makes them entirely their own. You've got a level heavily inspired by Afterburner, and there's another inspired by Flicky. Excellent sprite rotating is back and used to even better effect than the first time. And even though the game has a sort of squashed look about it due to it being on a handheld, it really doesn't hinder your gameplay experience at all. And I'm not quite sure how they managed to pull that one off. But damn it, they did, and Gunstar Future Heroes does something that I previously didn't think it could. It didn't let the franchise down. 
but instead become a sequel that's fully worthy of the Gunstar name. Is it better than the original? Not at all. But it's not a bad game. It's the weird quirkiness of the original on top of the great gameplay that makes it stand out from the sequel for me. But overall, the gameplay here is pretty much the same on both, and the graphics push both of the system limits to their fullest. And no, I'm not forgetting about you, little Game Gear version. And that's really it. Gunstar Heroes with its two games and one port is an extremely short series to cover. But, how could I not? A game series that is constantly being brought up by YouTubers and rising in popularity more and more has to be looked at. Thankfully, in this instance, the game stands up to the legacy that it's built. Sure, it's been covered to death and, well, now I've had my turn too. What's best of all is that I had great fun doing this video. Playing these games so many years later is still such a joy and fully worth your time. And although it's pretty much certain the Treasure will never make another Gunstar Heroes game, what they have given us so far is, in a word, absolutely legendary. Hey guys, thanks for checking out my video. If you want to check out some more of my videos, click the links that you see at the top of the screen. If you haven't already, please rate, favourite, comment and subscribe. And if you want to support the show that little bit extra, come and check me out over on Patreon. This is DJ Slope signing out, and hopefully I'll see you all next time.